that yeah. stock value price which was given to me is was 165 rupees and today the price is 8000 rupees 50 times it has multiplied by that much so why are you still working <laughs> <laughs> i am not that rich <laughs> i have invested in uh, around uh, 12 startups wow in past uh, 3 years how much is your investment income uh, as a multiple of salaried income 6 to 8 times wow if you invest into financial services company 6 months before the election it gives a very best return post election can you touch upon some of the mistakes that people of your generation have made due to which they are not financially independent but you are Hey guys, welcome to our latest series, The 1% Life, where we talk to people who have achieved financial independence. That is, they've achieved the superpower to not be controlled by money. They control the money. We have Mr. Biren Parikh, who is a director at Crystal. Mr. Biren, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's my honor to be here. The honor is all ours, sir, because we would love to know how your journey has been. And I'm sure millions sure. of people would love to know how they can achieve financial independence in their life. Because a lot of people think that's unachievable for them, right? right so we yeah. want to learn from you. So let me start sure. by first asking, are you financially independent? Yes, very much. How Since do you, quite some time. But how do you arrive at that? Because a lot of people, when you ask them, yeah. what is that amount of money they need after which they can just <clears throat> Netflix and chill for the rest of their life? In most people's mind, that number is 100 crores, 200 crores, because there's no like real logic or math behind it. One simple rule which you have to follow. Your passive income should be greater than your active income. Meaning the money that I'm making from my investments ka profits right. should exceed my salary income. Income, okay. So that and is... And then for you, that's happening. Yes. Like how much is your investment income uh, as a multiple of salaried income? Like is your invest... Like for example, your stock market plus mutual fund plus gold returns. Mm -hmm. Is it like 3x of your salaried income? So that's what I wanted to understand. Like how much has it become as a proportion? Eight, six to eight times. Wow. So your investment income is six times your salaried income. Yeah, I mean, it has multiplied by that much, I will say. So, that. why are you still working? <laughs> <laughs> My five will say that. <laughs> you can't say Tom. <laughs> no, 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 but I enjoy but have actually. Thought about it? Have you thought about just sitting at home? And no, 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 not at all. Not. So, for the audience who's been hearing so far, they would be like, oh, this guy would have had a, you know, very, coming from a rich family, has a very high salary from day one. So, can you talk a little bit about... Uh, you started working at the age of 20 to 23, I'm assuming. Right. Right. So can you talk about what was your first salary and how it has progressed <coughs> over time? Yeah. So my first job was from campus and that was uh, with Tata Chemicals Limited in Mithapur. Okay. And that was for 3200 rupees a monthly salary. And uh, I was with Oracle for quite some time. How Obviously, yeah, I was there for 14 years. Well, I, I, I see this a pattern because a lot of our... Uh, in the previous generation, yeah, they have the tendency to stick in a company for a very long time. Right. But the current generation tr likes to move every three years exactly. or four years. So what made you stick in the same company for okay, 14 years? So, so one is that I was traveling. Okay. So I travel a lot of countries, maybe 10, 12 countries. Okay. okay. So that's where I didn't realize. Okay. So it, I mean, at any point of time, you will won't get bored. Other thing was that now there was a stock option which was given to me. In 2005, I don't remember exactly when it got listed. Yeah, 2005 or 2008. So when it got listed, a lot of people sold the stock. They mm. said that, oh, I, I mean, it is giving a good return kind of a thing, whatever, 20, 30%, 50%. They sold the stock. They, they made money at that point of time. But I continue to remain invested. Mm. So that yeah. stock value price, which was given to me, was 165 rupees. Okay. Okay. And today the price is 8,000 rupees. So 80 times, 40 times, 50 times. You can say that. 50 times growth. 50, yeah, growth. In 20 years. 20 years. Interesting. Okay, so that is what I, in equity, if the company is good, fundamental is good, okay, then you have to remain invested. Interesting. And again, as I said, connect the dots. I like it. Okay, so that is one time. After that, I moved to Barclays Bank, okay, where again I got... So wait, after 14 years of working at yeah. Oracle, what yeah. was your ending salary there at Oracle? Close to 2 lakh. 2 lakh somehow. Yeah. Then again, after I joined Polaris, okay, again, they also gave the stock option. Okay. Okay. okay, and there I stayed for eight years. Hmm. Okay, and as I said, 22, I moved out. Now, their stock option also is like, they give me whatever the price which is there, it, they give me at 40 rupees. Okay, and now the price is 1000 rupees. Wow, okay. <laughs> so, I have not sold any option. The big option. learning for people is to take stock options. Yeah, stock option is a very good thing. I think you should go for stock option. You go for a small company who offers a stock option. Hmm. Okay, but please ensure that now company is doing sort of an ethical thing. 
So now I understood your secret. It was not your salary growth. It is that you chose companies which you really believed in, right? Uh, and rode that journey along with the company by taking correct. some stock options. Correct. Correct. Interesting. Yeah. you had a phenomenal career growth right uh, one thing that happens when people become richer or they make more money is that they sort of go all out you know lifestyle inflation as they say it how has your lifestyle changed has it changed firstly um i'll say uh, it has changed to just remain uh, i'll say comfortable okay and mm-hmm. not like extravagant kind of a thing huh. obviously like i don't that example means- what car do you have i drive um, honda mobilio which is a okay. 10 years old car Okay. And it's very comfortable. Why should I sell it off? I mean, right. so a lot of people are saying, "Oh, you should buy electric EV, you should buy this new that one." Uh, I, I can buy. And they are not financially independent, I'm assuming. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. See, for giving advice, anyone can give advice, right? right? I mean, so you should buy to do this that. Yeah. But I I don't believe in that. So what is the most expensive purchase uh, of your life? So property only I said that. No, apart from property. Uh, the car, I mean, when I bought it it was 15 lakh. Yeah. That's so. it. That's one it, yeah. car 15 lakhs and then house that's yeah. no other expensive uh, purchase no, like no, what about no. your children and all what do they do how have you uh, talked okay, about so, um, okay so my daughter is again btech computer science huh. and she is working with a jp morgan and my son is just uh, completed his uh, 12th and hmm. he is in iit bombay okay so so you've done a good job of parenting <laughs> <laughs> um, not, i don't uh, know whether i am not credit spoiled kids like as they say when no, kids are born of rich parents absolutely they not become absolutely no i don't i don't believe in that in fact um, so nobody is spending money then you are not spending money kids are not spending money so why are you making so much money <laughs> i want to spend money i'm spending money on the traveling basically hmm. going on to the vacation or so i mean your sorry. investment income is far more than your salary right like the returns that are generating from investments is far more Right, so if hundred yeah. rupees is your salary plus investment income, out of that, how much percent is going into karcha? So, so see, I mean, in my investment is generating whatever income, okay, but income is in the sense my investment is growing it. Of course, I not you're not. I'm not liquidating it. Of course, I know that. Right, huh. yeah. So I'm just keeping it there only. Investment, I'm not liquidating it. Huh. Huh. No, no, okay. I know that, but. Yeah. Some people, you know, don't look at it like what you think, right? They'll be like, "Ha, huh, last year I made so much profit. I'll just sell this now and I'll make some money." From my salary, I thirty, thirty to forty percent. And that you're not even touching. Yeah, not touching that investment part. I mean, hmm. so. when did you sort of achieve your first crore? And what kind of advice would you give to the audience here to achieve their first crore? Like crore pati. When did you become a crore pati? <laughs> like they say, I'm not Amitabh Bachchan, but. Uh, when did you become a crore pati? So maybe ten years back or so, I'll say that. Uh, no. So in your early forties, you became yeah. a crore pati. Yeah. So how, what advice would you give somebody to achieve their first crore as quickly as possible? So I my advice will be that now you try to achieve the mastery, okay, expertise in your field of area, okay, or knowledge, okay. Don't try to focus too much on the salary. when you become a sort of a uh, i'll say expert which people look to you okay hmm. or i'll say thought leader that's where no you money will start coming to you so that's number one right. become a subject matter expert, expert in whatever your chosen field right. right what are the second or second or third lessons a uh, second lesson is that see um, earlier also i used to be like no, what is there for me okay today youngster thinks like that only okay? what's in that, it for me what's in for me okay so don't think like that okay first try to give something before you expect something hmm don't be selfish hmm hmm okay so that i feel that i am doing lot more for others and that is where i think karma is giving back to me hmm so this is more like a mindset mindset have yeah. this mindset and then money will come to you correct got it and, and what's the any other last and lesson? third thing is that see um try to go with the flow really a lot yeah. of people say that i'm going with the flow <laughs> yeah so try to go with the so something new comes up people are very hesitant okay i mean people are very averse to change so be open to new things new things you should have a growth mindset right okay something new comes up try to do it that way hmm. so that is third thing which i'll uh, hmm. request so is like is the is stock market your biggest source of wealth creation exactly correct so if i were to ask you let's say today your net worth is 100 rupees yeah. how much of 100 rupees came from stock market um, i'll say 70 80 Seventy percent of your wealth has come from stock market. Seventy to eighty percent, yeah. Wow. Because I feel that salary is only for your day-to-day expenses. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, day-to-day life, whatever you are spending it. Yeah. Okay, you should earn more than that. Then yeah. that is a kind of a financial independence for you. Yeah. So that's a great point because I know a lot of people in my circles, people who are like four or five years older than me, like in their mid thirties. Okay. They are making like forty, fifty lakhs per annum income. Right. But when I talk about their investments, yeah, ten lakh, twenty lakh savings. That's it. 
yeah i know so i have the same kind of uh, i'll say um, examples from my colleagues or from my mm-hmm. and you i want to double tap on that because yeah. that's a very interesting question sure because you are talking about your colleagues right who are also in their early 50s right but you and, and they're making similar kind of income right but you have achieved financial independence but they have not so can you touch upon some of the mistakes that people of your generation have made due to which they are not financially independent but you are yeah correct people feel that now they want to keep money safe okay and that's where they keep it in the bank account or in the fixed deposit hmm. okay including my father also okay i am other way i have hardly any money in my bank account okay okay investment is very much required in wise manner so that na it multi- multiplies yeah so, uh, so one <clears throat> mistake is people are putting most of their money in safe assets yeah what other mistakes are people doing uh, other mistake is that na people don't invest in the equity or mutual fund Huh. I mean, that's the same thing. I yeah. mean, equity or mutual fund is a little riskier compared to safe assets. So uh, no, not no, no. It's not the same thing. Because okay. see, people, once they have money, they will say that, okay, I'll keep it into a say, property or I'll keep it into gold. So when you see a property, a physical thing, people feel, oh, it's good actually, actually and they will invest into that. Hmm. But if you see property will grow maybe by 2x or 3x in whatever 10 years, 15 years. Correct. Okay. But if you see equity, it will grow maybe a 10x, 15x, 20x, hmm. okay, in whatever 15 years. So you see the kind of a difference which is there. So that is okay. the second mistake. Second Not mistake. Not putting in stock for yeah. equity. Yeah, correct. Are there any other mistakes? Other mistake is that they have to little bit diversify also. Uh, but uh, if you look at the reports, which right. uh, RBI keeps, uh, you know, calculating from time to time, mm-hmm. uh, 76% of an average Indian's wealth is in the real estate, right? right? And around 10% is in gold. And another 10% is in your durable goods, like your smartphones, refrigerator, furniture and all that. Right goods. And like 5% is in actual assets. Let's understand more about you. Let, mm-hmm. Can you tell us what is your asset allocation and how do you really think about asset allocation? Okay. 5% in maybe gold. Uh, maybe a th- Starting with the smaller things. Yeah. Sm- <laughs> <laughs> maybe a... Gold ten- when you mean like jewelry or like gold coins? Both. Both. Gold coins also. Yeah. Gold coins also. Gold biscuits. Yeah. <laughs> I am not that rich. <laughs> I wish that. <laughs> uh, yeah, but um, yeah, gold coins, small gold coins. Okay, and then uh, maybe um, I'll say uh, property, fifteen uh, percent. Uh-huh. When you mean property, the house that you're living in, or like plots of land, and all yeah, that? something more than that. Yeah, living not not where I'm living it, but yeah, something. You're excluding your house. Excluding house. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, and uh, then I'll say that uh, uh, 40 forty percent maybe equity, forty okay. to fifty uh, percent equity. Again, twenty percent mutual fund, okay. And then recently, I also discovered about uh, angel investment in the startups. So wow. I'll say maybe twenty twenty five percent also into uh, startups. Wow. Okay. okay. So I invested in uh, around uh, twelve startups. Wow. In past okay. uh, three years. Got it. So that is like how, how much did you say? Twenty percent of your money is in uh, startups. Yeah, correct. Twenty percent is in startups. Right. And right. the expected. Growth rate for investing in startups, I would assume like 40-50% CAGR over a long term period. Yeah, correct. Right. That is so, but you have to forget money for five years at least. Of course. Like I, I had recently uh, spoken to Anupam Mittal on a, on a right. podcast where yeah. he said that uh, wealth creation doesn't happen through asset allocation. It happens through taking concentrated bets, right? So right. you have kept 20% of your net worth into startups right. where you are taking some concentrated bets because you've invested in like 10-12 companies. Correct. And very high chance that even half of them might go bust but Correct. the remaining half will Cover. grow by like 10x 20x Correct. so overall portfolio grows by 40% or Correct. 50% and that creates wealth creation Correct. the remaining 80% of your portfolio you have kept it in safer assets so preserve your wealth like you worked so hard all your life yeah, right. so you want to preserve that right so you Correct. you're not gambling all your money no no right correct right so right. hopefully that 20% which you invested in startups will be equivalent to this 80% soon and then again you'll do yeah, the safe side. Hopefully. So that's the idea. Hopefully, right, right, right correct. So now let's talk about your safe assets because yeah. I think that is what's uh, more relevant uh, for correct. the audience. Correct. Um, so you mentioned that around 40% is in stocks. What what did you study? Because a lot of people think that if I have to pick stocks, I need to have a CA degree, I need to have a CFA degree, I need to be an investment banker. They I think know, that I need I to have know. a finance degree. I so know. what did you study? So my learning is only through reading the newspaper. Hmm. Okay, and maybe, maybe blocks nowadays, right? Hmm. So I don't actually go by tips or etc. like that. Okay, unless and until someone is working in the company 
okay and he i mean when i talk to him he says that okay these are the sort of a uh, growth avenues for the company yeah. or this is a new territory where we are expanding yeah. that's okay. what even rakesh junior wala did he used to yeah. actually go to titans office and spend hours with those management he, people to understand he, yeah he was into full time but i don't right. have that much time but uh. yeah obviously i i do that kind of a reading so i normally read just a, a financial newspaper daily read the news okay and you have to connect the dots mm. okay which most people don't do say for example israel iran war is there right now what is the implication of that you see gold prices is rising why mm. because all the major economies are moving the money in the gold okay mm. because there might be impact on the oil okay mm. right so so that is how you have to connect the dots i'm so just saying the gold price is increasing right now looks like okay give so give me another interesting example like this say uh, stock market is going up then you see the stock related to bse cdsl hmm right their prices are going up why right. because more people are investing into a stock market more demat accounts are getting open yeah. and more uh, those broking uh, companies prices are also going up hmm. right so based on certain event you have to connect the dots you have to figure out okay how it will impact the market or how it will impact the company hmm. like for example right now the elections are coming right a right. lot of people are like you know probably the ruling party will win again so the markets will rally more right i would love to know your analysis of how should i invest uh, there was a uh, some statistics which was published whereby it said that now if you invest into a sort of a financial services company 6 months before the election okay then it gives a very best return post election okay what is this analysis who published this so it was a general statistics which was published Okay, through news paper. The historical data. Historical data based on historical, and they had given that now which sector is giving a good return, pre-market rally, post-market rally, right? Mm. And but how did you build this uh, skill set, right? Because you don't have a finance degree. Like, what did you study exactly? I'm a B computer science. Exactly, right? Yeah, so computer. a lot of people over here watching are techies. Software. So how do you build that? You know, okay, so there are, so there are two ways. Okay, uh, okay. One is that when I was doing my graduation, somehow it clicked to me that now I need to understand a little bit of accounting. So thirty years back, this is. Yeah, thirty years back. Okay, thirty so years I, back, you thought I need to learn. I, 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 while I was studying the technology, but I felt that I need to have basic understanding of accounting. You good Jews, not all like money minded <laughs> from day one. Second was that since I started working into um, this financial services company. Okay, so the company which Iflex Solutions, which was earlier called Citadel, and now it has become Oracle. Hmm. Okay, so I was there for fourteen years in my first phase of my career. Okay, and that are they are into particularly banking. Uh, services okay they they have banking software so because working to the that company you are working uh, in the financial services financial sector. services so i got a idea about okay banking full full fledged so i mean that mm. encourage me to get deeper into uh, this one so yeah. that's about stocks now mutual funds and other investments that you're doing um like everybody is aware okay there is stocks there is mutual funds there is gold there is real estate right uh, but you are also investing in some other interesting assets Right so can you talk about a little bit about some non conventional non conventional investing things that you are doing Yeah so apart from this standard things as i say startup is one part of it uh, second is about uh, doing this uh, peer to peer lending also okay, okay whereby uh, What is that peer to peer lending Peer to peer lending is whereby uh, for example i i know you today but for example yesterday i was not knowing you right and mm. i you wanted to borrow some money or highly unlikely <laughs> but but i i know I, that uh, you wanted the money and i just lend you money okay Let's through say some I platform lakh, yeah you give me 1 lakh yeah through some platform i lend you that money and uh, since you or maybe anyone who was not having a sort of a means of borrowing it he's ready to give higher interest because i didn't get loan from the bank bank right because of xyz reason or maybe it is going to take time or whatever reason right so you said okay i i want to borrow money and i i'll lend you money but at the higher interest rate so what else do you do apart from these things do you invest in crypto crypto in fact i had invested quite early but huh. uh, one of that exchange uh, shut down and hence i lost that oh okay so it okay. was a small small crypto i mean it was uh, 10 years back Right. So I lost money also. I mean, that's uh, what I'm saying. Uh, so you have to take a risk. Okay, that's what I uh, feel that. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. So right now, because you've achieved financial independence, you are investing like this. Right. Uh, but how has it changed? Right now you are 52. But when you were in your 20s and 30s, was this investing strategy different, or has it evolved over time? Uh, it has obviously evolved over the time. But that time also, I used to invest in the stock. So Any last money lesson before we wrap up for achieving your first growth? Because you're all talking about the mindset, <laughs> and I like that because. uh whenever you ask this question people only tell you know stock market this that 
but i like these kind of life lessons which you have gained right yeah. very simple but makes a lot of sense when i'm hearing it yeah so i think um, don't try to live someone else life okay, okay so when i say if people are spending money people are putting something on instagram huh. okay then you also want to do it ha huh. don't try to do it that way hmm okay figure out what are your limits okay where you want to reach okay how much money you have to save or how much money you have to invest hmm. okay to make it whatever where you want to reach yeah thank you so much vire and i thoroughly enjoy talking to uh, i'm sure the audience who've been listening for so long they have a lot more clarity as to how to achieve financial independence in their own lives on that sure. note guys thank you so much for watching so far and i'll see you in the next one